Hi guys, this is Ramon from The Guitar Show. We're going to be talking about Danny Kerwin today. I'm just going to go through here a bit about his history, his playing style, and um, the guitars, amps, and effects that he uh, used or didn't use. Okay, so Danny Kerwin was born in uh, Brixton, South London. Basically, he was, his early influences were the French gypsy jazz guitarist uh, Django Reinhardt. Eric Clapton, who was playing with the Blues Breakers at around that time, that Danny Kerwin picked up the guitar, and uh, he was also influenced, like a lot of other British um, guitar players, by Hank Marvin. He was playing in a band called the Boiler House, um, and they were um, rehearsing in the South London um, basement boiler room, where where they got their um, name from. And Mike Vernon, who was um, Fleetwood Mac's sort of manager and producer, discovered him there. Actually, Peter Green was thinking about managing the Boiler Room band, which uh, Danny Kerwin was in. But they lost their rhythm section, and in the end, Peter Green invited Danny Kerwin to join Fleetwood Mac. Danny Kerwin played his first gig with Fleetwood Mac on 14th of August 1968 at the Nags Head in Battersea, London. Danny Kerwin's first recordings with um, Fleetwood Mac were on Albatross, Peter Green's song. Actually got to the top of the UK charts in December 1968. In early 1969, whilst they were on tour in USA, Fleetwood Mac actually went to Chess Recording Studios in Chicago and um, they recorded a really cool album called um, Fleetwood Mac in Chicago, which uh, you should definitely check out. Sort of middle of 1969, the band officially released Them Play On, which was really the only official album that Danny Coburn played um, with Peter Green on. After Peter Green left, Danny went on to record two more albums with Fleetwood Mac, Kiln House in 1970 and Bear Trees in 1972. Whilst actually on their USA tour of Bear Trees in 1972, um, basically he had an argument um, with Welch over some tuning issues and um, basically a few incidents happened and he walked out never to return again. So that was the last time he ever played with Fleetwood Mac. Okay, so let's talk about some of Danny's guitars. Um, One of his first guitars that he ever owned was actually uh, Watkins Rapier 33, which was a 1960s British-made Fender Stratocaster-style guitar. actually had a chambered body, and it was a red guitar. He actually started using it in the boiler house, and then carried it on to Fleetwood Mac when he joined in 1968. When Fleetwood Mac released Albatross, which was the first um, recording that Danny Cohen played on, the, the flip side, the B-side, was a really cool tune, which you want to check out, called Jigsaw Puzzle Blues. And that's kind of testament to Danny's sort of influence um, from uh, Eddie Lang, Django Reinhardt, and that sort of early jazz guitar. It's really, really cool playing. And that was supposedly done on this Watkins Rapier guitar. So it could be that he actually used that on Albatross because Fleetwood Mac actually had a Stratocaster in their armory, but it's said that Peter Green actually used the, the Strat on it. So who knows whether... Danny Kerwin used a Les Paul for for that track or a Watkins guitar. The actual guitar that um, Danny's most known for is a 1956 Gibson Les Paul standard cold top. Actually a P90s. Basically this guitar, a lot of people um, think um, it's a 1968 model, but um, there's a few photos, I'm going to try and put one up now, where you can see clearly that it doesn't have the crown emblem on the headstock. It just has a normal Gibson Les Paul decals on there. It had a really, really cool tone and it really worked well with Danny's sort of really tough vibrato that he got. It really did sort of, it was a great combination with Peter Green's um, burst and his humbuckers. Also, Kerwin actually used a 1959 Les Paul standard. You can see that actually on the video when they're playing Albatross together. So they were both playing Les Paul standards, both, you know, 1959 Les Pauls. And um, no one really knows what happened to that guitar. Some say that it was sold um, to another guitar player in England, but no one's really sure about it. After then, he went on to play a Gibson Les Paul Custom, which was 1957 or a 58. Um, again, not sure, but if you want to leave a comment, tell me if it was 57 or 58, that would be cool. And this was actually the guitar that Danny um, used right up until he left in 1972, and apparently he smashed it um, in a bit of a temper, actually, on his last gig with Flute of Mac. So I'm not sure if it was actually broken completely beyond repair, because... Um, there's a few people who say that it's actually wasn't actually damaged that much. So again, leave some comments if you know better than me. It's actually interesting in the Station Man video that Danny Kerwin is playing a Jeremy Spencer's Red Flying V guitar. So they used to sort of swap guitars around quite a lot in Fleetwood Mac. Often um, they also had a Fender Telecaster, um, which they'd both play. And also um, there was a, a Fender Stratocaster with a maple neck. Now Danny actually had, when he left Fleetwood Mac and, and onwards after then, he had a 50s maple neck Stratocaster. And he actually, there's apparently a story where he sold it to some shop in England and they, some the family members managed to buy it back. So whether or not that was the actual Stratocaster that was used on Albatross, 
we don't know, but um, that's an interesting fact for you all. Let's talk about amplifiers. Basically, for Little Mac had a deal, um, endorsement deal with Orange Amplifiers. So they got free amps from Orange. They were 100 watt amps with 4x12 cabinets. So in 1968, when Danny Cohen joined, that's what he was using. Those early recordings, for example, Albatross, were done on Orange Amplifiers. Um, later, Orange decided to ask Fleetwood Mac to pay for the amplifiers and they wouldn't give him any more free ones. So with that in mind, Danny went out and bought a Fender Twin Reverb and then Peter Green followed Danny and also bought a Fender Twin Reverb. So basically after that, they, were, they tended to use Fender amps. Um, a lot of the times they'd hire in gear, so they'd be using dual showmans and especially in America, um, using sort of quite powerful amps. I think in the Boston Tea Party, there were dual showman amps with um, maybe even 2 by 12 15 uh, inch JBL speakers so quite powerful basically there were no effects apart from reverb they would just plug in straight into the amp um, with a less pull and that would give them the sound you know if they if they wanted to get distortion they just opened up the volume on the guitar full if they wanted to get a clean sound they just backed off the volume that's basically how they did it actually if you listen to the Boston Tea Party live recording you can hear Peter Green actually switch on the reverb. So he obviously had um, a reverb on, a, on the, the on and off pedal from the Fender amp. So Danny wasn't really known for using guitar effects. You know, his effects was more his vibrato um, and the overdrive, you know, driving the amp hard. And uh, that's really how he got his sound. Thanks for checking out this video. Actually, um, please guys, if you wanna leave some messages um, and tell me if you know know anything else about Danny Cohen, wanted to add to sort of the information I've given you here, that'd be really, really great. Don't forget to subscribe, you know, cause we're gonna be doing a few more videos, a few more different artists. So uh, we're gonna be doing one on Peter Green next. So check that one out. Okay, take care guys, see you soon.